So now we've completed the practical installation of the My Energy Zappi 2 unit, we're in a position where we can power it up, test it and commission it. So we're going to power it up first of all and then we're going to carry out the live tests on this piece of equipment so that we can find any problems or faults that might be in place and clear those before we go through the commissioning and programming sequence. So first of all we'll power up the unit And as you can see, that's the screen that the My Energy unit will display at all times. We can see there's a lot of information on here that we'll have a little chat about, and then we'll discuss some of the key points on there. So we've powered it up, we've got a number of icons to work through. So we start in the top right hand corner here where we've got kilowatts and a picture of a pylon. Let's explain to that icon to me, Joe. So what's happening here, this is showing us how much power we're importing from the national grid. So in other words, how much electricity we're drawing into our property. What will happen is when this does start to uh, draw uh, current, we'll start to see some arrows pointing towards the house and we'll be told how much power we're importing. If we're in a fortunate position where we're generating our own electricity, the arrows will change direction to show that we are exporting electricity and they'll also change their size depending on how much power is being transferred. So working across, the centre one there that looks like a little picture of a house with a smiley face in, what's well, that one? Of course it's got a smiley face, we've just installed a zappy charge point to it. So that can tell us how much power the property is consuming. Okay. And in conjunction with other bits of my energy equipment, you can actually get that to display how much power your property is using. So now we're in the top left hand corner where we have a picture of the sunshine. Absolutely. And again, if we're in that position where we've got solar panels or perhaps we've got some kind of wind turbine or something like that and we're generating our own electricity, we'll see arrows flowing from the uh, sunshine there over to the property. And that's going to show us that we are generating electricity and there'll also be a power indication of how much we're generating. So now we've got EV disconnected, what's that suggesting to us? So that information will change depending on what status our charge point is in, whether we've got an electric vehicle plugged in, whether it's charging, uh, etc. So that will tell us what state uh, we're in there. So that is the status text. To give you a little rest, Joe, I'll take these two down here on the left hand corner. We've got 010120, that's where you'll input the date and underneath that's the time, so I've saved you those two. Absolutely, and just in case you think we're committed enough to be doing this on New Year's Day at 20 minutes past midnight, <laughs> let us assure you that that is not the case. We'd simply need to set that time and date to the correct value. Thanks for clearing up, Joe, that we're not working on New Year's Day at gone midnight. There is a little bit of space underneath here. What sort of text or information could appear in that section there? So that helps us to understand uh, whether we've got import limiting is active or whether the eSense input is live. So those are some additional functions that the Zappi 2 can deliver, and we'll talk about those in a later video. So moving across to the center icon, can you just explain what that one is for me? Absolutely, so that is simply the Zappi charger and it kind of indicates the process we've got going on here. You can see that we've got a situation where we've got the inputs into the property, we've got the property and then the Zappi charger connected to the property. And at the moment you can see that we are disconnected from our electric vehicle. We're not actually charging at the moment. Now you may occasionally see some wavy lines come above here and that means that the Zappi charger might be in a thermally limiting mode so that it doesn't overheat. So moving across, I've got a, a leaf symbol and a 0%. What's that gonna be telling me? So that is simply how much of your last charge as a percentage was generated from green energy. So that's quite nice to be able to track that, isn't it? Again, if you've got solar panels or a wind turbine or some such, you can track how much of your last charge was harvested from those renewable sources. So if we got that up to 100% and say we were getting it off solar, we could say we're driving on sunshine. Absolutely, that'll be the dream. Not to want to be foolish, Joe, um, what's the car symbol for? So obviously this is just the last element in the overall system that we've got here. And what's gonna happen is that if we connect an electric vehicle into our Zappi 2 charger, we'll see uh, a line form across there. And there'll be a little reading here telling us how much power is being delivered into our vehicle. So with that in mind, Joe, the kilowatt hour section underneath, that will indicate what to me? So that keeps track of how much energy has been sent to your car, transferred to your car during the last uh, session of charging. So that's quite an interesting one because if you know how much you're getting charged per unit, you can just do a simple multiplication to keep a track of how much it's cost you to charge up during the previous session. 
I'm picking the last thing that we can see on the screen, Joe. We've got the words fast there. So what's that suggesting? So the Zappi 2 has three charging modes. So we've got fast, we've got eco, and we've got eco plus, and that will be displayed there. We'll talk a little bit more about what those mean momentarily. So that's explained a lot of the features that appear on the actual screen itself, but we've obviously got four buttons here, Joe. So we're starting from this end, can you work me through the buttons? Absolutely. So we've got here the menu button, so that's going to bring up the different menus, and we'll see that in action in a moment. And then we've got these two, which will initially change our charge mode. So you can see there we can go into Eco, Eco Plus, or back to Fast Mode again. But when we're in the menus, that'll move us up and down the menu, and it will also then increase or decrease values once we've selected whatever menu item we want. We've also got the plus sign. Again, this performs multiple functions. It's the boost button, and again, more on that later. And also, once you go into the menus, that is how you select your item and also confirm values and move on to whatever the next setting is. So we've carried out our installation, we've done our dead test, and we're at the stage now where we're gonna carry out our live testing with this 3152 Matrail Tester Joe. It's almost mythical, this test of carrying it out for an EV charging point, but it's no difficult than any other test that we carry out in the electrical industry. Can you go through the process for me of carrying out the test? Absolutely. So we've got to think about carrying out our usual live testing procedure. So we need to test the earth fault loop impedance from here. We need to be able to test the RCD function that's embedded within the Zappi unit. But we've also got to think about making sure that the Zappi charger is responding as it will do when we plug a car in. Now, that's very difficult to do that test, even with an electric vehicle. Vehicle, and we don't have an electric vehicle so we're going to get very very close to an EV here with this device this is probably the closest I'll ever come to owning an EV so we're going to use uh, these two different bits of kit this is going to simulate our EV when we plug it in it's going to allow us access to the terminals to carry out the testing that we would normally for any circuit but it's also going to simulate what would happen when we plug an electric vehicle in. Now it's worth noting just before you start your testing process that the Zappi 2 charger has a built-in pin code to prevent people from tampering with the charger or from accessing your electricity when you don't want them to. Now the default setting for that pin code is for it to be disabled when you receive your Zappi 2 charger so if it has been enabled it's important that you make sure that that is switched off as it could complicate your testing process. So this Matrel 3152 Joe has a computer built into it and that computer is designed to make electricians life easier. So can you go through the sequence for me for testing the live tests on this Zappi 2 charging unit? Absolutely, now we could go through this a test at a time using the single test option, but actually in the Matrel MI3152, if we go into auto sequences, you can see here that this is pre-programmed with all the tests that you're gonna to need to carry out. So we're gonna be charging an electric vehicle charging system. And if you look down here, there's a number of options that we can use. We've got single phase, and then a little bit further down, we've got three phase. So we're gonna go with single phase, obviously, on a domestic installation. And also we've gotta think about, are we looking at a system that is ventilated or a system that is not ventilated? So we'll select the no vent trip, we'll go into that one, and then we'll press the little play button there to take us through the system. Now, the good thing about this Matrel tester is that it talks you through every stage of what you need to do and actually gives you the directions to follow. So first of all, it's saying plug EV adapter into the charging station. So we're gonna take our EV adapter and we're gonna plug it into our Zappi 2 charging unit. So we'll just open up the lid on that and then plug that in there like so. Happy days. So we've got that connected up now. The next bit of the instruction tells us to take the PP state knob and set that to the desired loading current. So you can see on here, we've got a number of different current loadings that this can take. We're gonna set it to 32 amps for our Zappi charger because it's a seven kilowatt unit, which means that it's going to draw about 32 amps. We've then got the CP state knob, and this is going to simulate the car being in different conditions, whether it's charging, uh, whether it's communicating, and also simulating the car going into a fault to make sure that the charger responds in the correct way. So now that we've got this plugged in and we've got the PP state knob to the correct setting, we're ready to go to the next stage of the procedure. And we can access that by simply pressing that button there. So we've now got our instructions for the next stage of this. So the first thing that we're indicated we should check here is that we've got our CP state knob set to A, and that just illustrates to the charging unit that the EV is disconnected. And you can see on the screen here on the Zappi 2, it's showing us the EV disconnected. So we can put a little tick in the box here to indicate that that is satisfactory. When the knob is set to A, the EV is disconnected. And that'll become quite important that that's working as we go through the rest of the tests. We then change our CP state knob to B 
and we should be seeing an EV detected and we should be seeing that it is not charging. So you can see here a couple of things. The uh, plug and socket arrangement is now locked in place, so that's good. It's telling us that it's locked. This little glowing symbol is this kind of ready pinky color, which means that the car is connected, but not charging. And again, on the screen, you can see there that it is connected, but it is not charging. And so we can put a little tick in the box marked B there as well. We're then going to change our CP state knob to C and that indicates to the charging unit that we are charging. So we're now simulating a charge going on. We're charging through uh, L1, as you can see here on the indicator. So this can be used for three phase or single phase. And you can also see that the charging symbol here is now glowing white, which means that we are charging. So that is simulating a charging function and that indicates that the Zappi charger will communicate with the electric vehicle correctly. So we can put a tick in the box there now to show that that is charging. We then need to change our CP state knob to E and that should then throw the vehicle into a fault mode. So it's simulating a fault and you can see on the uh, Zappi 2 charger we've got this kind of uh, warning signal here to say that something is going wrong. And what's quite clever as well is that the Zappi charger is now trying to reset itself to see if the fault clears. Of course, it's not going to as long as we've got this set to E. So that shows that the Zappi charger will go into this mode when a fault occurs on the electric vehicle. So again, we can put a little tick in that box there. And then if we just scroll down here, again, we're just making sure we've got all the settings in the right place here and that test is working as it should do. We've got this PPI max setting here. Well, you remember from earlier, we set the PP state to 32 amps because that's the amount of current we expect this charger to deliver uh, under its most heavily loaded situation. So this is just making sure that we've got the PP state knob set to the right value, which we have. So we can put a little tick there and we can say that we finished that bit. So that's that stage of the inspection complete. So now we'll move on to the next stage. So now we'll just press this little stop button here to indicate that we've completed the first stage of the testing. So now we've got the instructions for the next stage. So we're being told to turn the CP state knob to the C position, which we've got there. We're told to insert the test plug into the EV adapter test socket. So that means that what we want to do is we want to connect the tester to our EV adapter test socket. So now we've got our EV adapter socket set up properly we can move on to the next screen and on the next screen we're going to carry out the testing procedure so it's going to check uh, the voltages are correct so now all we've got to do is just press the run button and that should carry out the voltage test there so we can see that we're happy with our uh, voltages there no problem so we're ready to move on to the next test Okay, so now we're going to carry out our impedance testing. So we'll give this a go and see what results we get. So we've got our results stored inside the Metrol tester now, so we'll be able to go back and review those later. So now we'll move on and we'll start looking at testing our RCD function. Now bearing in mind that the RCD is inside the Zappi unit, so it's going to disconnect inside there. And that means we'll have to kind of reset uh, the Zappi every time we carry this test out. Just a little word of caution at this point as well. Um, if you've set the lock function on here to be on while it's charging, as we saw earlier in the video, it might be a good idea at this point just to disable those lock functions uh, because it can kind of uh, get confused with this going from state A to state C. It, it kind of thinks that someone's trying to tamper with the charger. So uh, it's a good idea just to disable that and then rearm it once you've completed uh, the testing procedure. So we'll move on to the RCD testing now. So we'll skip ahead onto here. So this has got automatic RCD testing. So you can see that the first thing it's tested is how long it takes to trip when there is six milliamps of uh, DC current leaking back into the system here. So we'll just reset the RCD at this point. So we need to turn the CP state back to A. So that's as if the EV is disconnected and then we hold down the menu button for three seconds. So 
So now that the RCD has been reset, the Zappi has been reset and rearmed, we can now change this back to C on the CP state pilot knob and it will carry out the next test. So again, it's now checked uh, for what happens on the other part of the cycle when DC is being injected into the system. And you can see there it's tripped in 3.12 seconds. And now we just keep repeating that procedure. Turn the CP state knob back to A and then hold down the menu button on the Zappi for three seconds. The Zappi will reset. It will play a jingle that may remind you of video games from the 80s. And then once the Zappi 2 has reset, we can go back into state C. And once again, it's going to start continuing with the RCD testing. Now this is the more conventional RCD test that we're familiar with now. It's checking uh, the time it takes to trip when there is 30 milliamps of imbalance in the system. So you can see there it's come out at 149.2 milliseconds. And repeat the procedure, CP state knob back to A and then we hold down the menu button for three seconds and the Zappi 2 will reset. Very good, we're back to state A, so the EV is disconnected. Change the CP state knob back to C again and the Matrel will now test the following setting. So now it's checking in the negative part of the cycle to make sure that the RCD is tripping and you can see there it's tripped in 136.1 milliseconds. So again, CP state back to A, so we've disconnected the EV effectively and then we're going to hold down the menu button and the Zappi is resetting again. So once the Zappi is powered up again, back to state C and we'll continue with the testing. We're now in the times five setting to see how quickly it trips when 150 milliamps of earth leakage is taking place. And it's tripped in 23.8 milliseconds. Back to state A, hold down the menu button for three seconds. And then once the Zappi has reset itself, back to state C. Again, to simulate the fault. And we've got 23.8 milliseconds on the negative part of the cycle. So that's all good. Back to state A again, hold down the menu button. And this time when we go into CP state C, we're going to try the half times test. So we shouldn't see the Zappi trip in this instance. And indeed it hasn't. It's gone over 300 milliseconds without tripping in the positive and the negative part of the cycle. So the Matrel has now done a ramp test on the RCD to find out exactly what value of current it's taking to trip. So we're at 19.5 milliamps. So again, back to state A, the EV is effectively disconnected. Hold down the menu button for three seconds. The Zappi has reset itself. We can go back to state C. It'll do a ramp test in the negative part of the cycle. And there we can see it's tripping at 19.5 milliamps. Back to CP state A. Hold down the menu button for three seconds. And the Zappi is resetting itself. And now when we go to CP state C, the Metrel is going to do a ramp test of DC to see how much DC current it takes to trip the Zappi 2 out. And you can see there that it's tripping at 6 milliamps in the positive part of the cycle. Back to CP state A, hold down the menu button for three seconds.
And then when we go into state C, it will now do a ramp test of DC in the negative part of the cycle. There we go. So that's all of those tests complete. And now what's quite clever is that on the Matrel tester, we can see that the functional tests were all complete quite satisfactorily. We can see that we measured the voltages. That was all good at 238 volts and 238 volts. So now if we press the back button, we'll go back to this page here and we can check our impedance readings that we had earlier. And you can see here, critically, we've got our ZS reading of 0.8 ohms. Now, one of the clever things about the Metrol tester is you can pre-populate the size and type of protective device on here for it to check the values of your uh, impedance readings. However, we've not got that set up in this case, so we just need to check that 0.8 ohms reading against the impedance table, either in the regs book or the on-site guide, and make sure that we're below the value that we're allowed to be at. Now, if we go back again, we can go back, we can check our RCD settings, and we can see that those are the results that we got for that. So, all things considered, we've got all of our test results inside the Metrol tester. We could do other various clever things with this now, uh, download them and send them to a document so that we've got those ready to go. But the principle that we've demonstrated here is how to do all of those tests and all of those checks on your Zappi 2 charging unit.